Hi, this is Mrs. Wiederholt. Welcome to my lesson video on solving quadratic equations by factoring. Now let's get started. First, let's take a look at what factoring is. Factoring is finding two numbers that you can multiply together to equal a third number. For example, if you are finding the factors of 20, you are finding two numbers that you can multiply together that will equal 20. So let's see, I have 1 times 20, that equals 20. We have 2 times 10, that equals 20. Um, 3, no, there's nothing times 3 that will equal 20, but what about 4? 4 times 5 equals 20. Now the next number we would choose is 5. So that means, yes, 5 times 4. And you kind of get the picture. At this point, if I keep going, that means that 10 times 2 equals 20, and then 20 times 1 equals 20. When factoring quadratic equations, we will be using this basic form of factoring. But a quadratic that is in factored form will be represented by two binomials that can be multiplied together. Now I know this might, make, might not make much sense right now, but just hang with me and you'll see what I mean. There are four steps to factor a quadratic equation, and then there is a fifth step that we will use to actually solve the quadratic equation. So let's look at step number one first. We want to find the factors of a times c that will add up to b. Now in order to do this, we have to identify our a, b, and c value. So my a value is 3, my b value is negative 4, and my c value is also negative 4. So again, in step number 1, now that we've identified our a, b, and c values, we can find the factors of a times c that will add up to b. Well, what is a times c? That would be 3 times negative 4. So 3 times negative 4, which equals negative 12. So what are some factors of negative 12 that would add or subtract to equal negative 4? Well, I know that 3 times 4 excuse me, I had to get my pen working, 3 times 4 is equal to 12, and of course we could make one negative, one positive. I also know that 2 times 6 is equal to 12, and 1 times 12 is equal to 12. Now if I look at, if I go first to the um, my 3 times 4, if I add those together I get 7, and I need it to equal the negative 4. If I were to say positive 3 plus negative 4, that would still not give me a negative 4. So I'm pretty sure I can cross that out, and now I'm going to look at my next pair of factors. Hmm, 2 times 6. Well, 2 plus 6 is 8, but 2 minus 6 would be negative 4. So I believe we have found the right pair right here. I could say that 2 times negative 6 is equal to negative 12, but I could also say that 2 plus negative 6 is equal to negative 4. Okay? So now that we have our factors, we can move on to step number 2, which would be to arrange your factors in parentheses. In order to do this, we are going to set up two sets of parentheses. We're going to be putting a, a binomial in each of these. But anyway, set up your two parentheses, and let's go ahead and put an x in the first place of each parentheses. So now I'm going to bring down my two factors. So since I have a factor of 2, positive 2, I'm going to bring that down to the first parentheses as plus 2. And since negative 6 is my next factor, I'm going to bring that down and place it in the second parentheses as minus 6. 
Now, it does not matter the order of your binomials. It is okay to have x minus 6 in the first parentheses and x plus 2 in the second parentheses. Now, let's move on to step number 3. Now, in this step, we are going to divide each factor by a. And the method we are using, it's called the drop and kick method. There are several methods that you can use to factor your quadratic equations, but I have found that this one is the shortest way. Um, so that's the one we're doing in this lesson video. So now let's get back to, to step three. If we divide each factor by a, well, the a is three. So I'm going to divide each of these by 3, and that would be the drop. If we're going to drop and kick, this would be the drop. Next, we're ready to move to step 4. Now, if after you have divided by the a value, if it does simplify to a whole number, then there's nothing else to do with that binomial. So for example, if we look at this first one, what is 6 divided by 3, or negative 6 divided by 3. Well, that would be negative 2, so we're just going to write x minus 2. Now look at the second binomial. So we have x plus 2, and then we have 2 divided by 3. Well, 2 divided by 3 does not simplify to a whole number, so what we're going to do is we're going to take that denominator of 3, and we're going to place it in front of the x. We would call that the kick. We're going to kick the 3 to in front of the x. And so that would look like this. 3x plus 2. So we are done with factoring this quadratic equation. We do have it in factored form, meaning this binomial times this binomial would equal the original quadratic equation. That's what I meant at the beginning of the video when I said ultimately we will have two binomials that are multiplied together. So this is a factor of the quadratic equation and this is a factor. Now, if you were to multiply these two binomials together, and normally we would uh, call that the FOIL method, you, so if you use the FOIL method and multiplied them together, you would get the original quadratic equation. Now we're going to move on and we're going to go to step number five. And remember, step number five is basically how we will find our solutions to this quadratic equation. In order to find our solutions, we need to take each binomial and set it equal to zero. And that would look like this. We could have x minus 2 is equal to 0. And then we would also have 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. So now that they are both set equal to 0, one at a time, we can solve for x. And I'm going to start with the one on the left. If I want to solve for x, I need to add 2 to both sides. Therefore, x equals 2. Now for the one on the right, this one is a two-step equation. I need to subtract 2 from both sides. That would give me 3x equals negative 2. And then I will divide each side by 3. So I would have x equals negative 2 thirds. Now we have our two solutions, x equals 2 and x equals negative 2 thirds. Now let's look at this though in the context of our graphing. You know, last week we talked about finding our solutions, our zeros, our roots, our x-intercepts, whatever the name, we found it by graphing. And so this is just a little sketch, but basically what we're saying is that this is a parabola that's going to open upward one of our solutions, or one of our x-intercepts, is where x equals negative two-thirds. Okay, and we're saying the other x-intercept is positive two. So this is how that relates to what we've been learning last week. For example two, I would like for you to try to do this one by following the notes that we just did together. 
You can press pause while you attempt to do this one on your own. At any point, if you need some help, just push play and then I will be going through the problem with you. So good luck. Okay, so now let's go over this one. This example of x squared minus 10x plus 9 equals 0. So in step number one, first we must identify our a, b, and c of the equation. a is the invisible one. The a term is always in front of x squared. The b term is the term in front of x, and you take the sign with it. So that would be negative 10. And then the C term is the constant, and in this case, it's positive 9. So now we are ready to find the factors of A times C, which will add up to B. So the factors of A times C, well, A times C would be 1 times 9. So the factors of 9 that add up to negative 10. There are only two pairs of factors for 9. It would either be 3 times 3 or 9 times 1. And so I realized 3 plus 3 or 3 minus 3 would not give me negative 10. But 9 plus 1 gives me positive 10. Therefore, negative 9 plus negative 1 equals negative 10. And negative 9 times negative 1 does equal positive 9. So now you're ready to move on to step number two, and that's where you take each factor that you just came up with, and you're going to place it inside of parentheses where x is the first term. You're creating your two binomials. Step number three is where you bring down the a value, which in this case is one, and so you're going to divide each factor by the a value. Well, negative 9 divided by 1 is simply negative 9. <clears throat> and negative 1 divided by 1 is also negative 1. So in this example, step 3 did not actually change our factors from step 2. Now, if the a value is something other than 1, then it will change them. But in this case, it is 1, so there's no change. So we're ready to move on to step number 4 which is simply to rewrite them as x minus 9 times x minus 1 equals 0. Now you're ready to move on to step 5, which is to set each binomial equal to 0. Each, and again, each binomial equal to 0. And now you just solve for x. And in both cases, these are just one-step equations. So, you add 9 to both sides and you get x equals 9. And if, on the second one, if you add 1 to each side, you have x equals 1. So again, I want us to look at this in the context of graphing. If we were to graph this quadratic equation, we know it opens upward because if we look at the equation, it is positive. There's no negative sign. We know it opens upward. And it would have, if you were to put this in your graphing calculator, you would see a graph similar to this where one of your x-intercepts is at 1, 0, and the other one is at 9, 0. The only other thing that I would encourage you to do is I would encourage you to check your work. And so what I mean by that is for the first x solution, for this first solution of x, x equals 9. So you could go through and go back, plug in the 9 for every x that you see, and it should equal 0. And again, we could do the same thing where x equals 1. You plug the 1 in for each x, and it should equal 0. I hope this video has helped you um, to understand a little bit more about solving quadratic equations by factoring, and I look forward to working with you in the future. Bye-bye.